Hey, what's happening YouTube? Thanks for stopping into the channel today here with the Rust Belt Mechanic. We've got the Can-Am back in here, bringing some really cool stuff for you guys. Today we're going to be working on the exhaust system here. The factory exhaust system on this thing is, eh, it's okay. It'll do the job, but you know we got to go bigger, better, badder. So today we got hooked up with Evo Power Sports. We got hooked up with their Captain's Choice exhaust system that we're going to be putting on this thing today. Tunable, switchable exhaust. It's going to be a great one. Stay tuned. All right, so first things first, we need to get a baseline on what this factory exhaust can do or what it sounds like at least. So we'll put this one on film here. We'll get some shots of the exhaust just at startup, at idle, revving it up, and then doing a good launch and taking off. So we have something to compare it to once we get this exhaust put on. So let's go over and uh, let's check out what this thing sounds like and we'll even put it up to the uh, decibel meter as well and uh, see how loud we're rocking on it too. That was a fun time got this thing home hopefully we got you guys some good initial readings on that one and now we're gonna look into the exhaust kit here to see exactly what comes in the kit before we put it on here and to be honest we got to give this thing some time to cool down a bit so let's go in and have a look at what comes in the captain's choice exhaust system always nice when we have to get out the SP tools cart to be able to hold as big of a box as we have here for this captain's choice exhaust open her up we've got this nice large piece of stainless steel exhaust mm, that thing looks really sweet right there you got twin tip out we've got a looks like a nice little template for cutting out the rear fascia just slightly enough to you know kind of hug the exhaust tips that are coming through that one it is going to do away with the center exhaust section in the back there which they just so nicely decided to make this really nice high quality center section block off plate for that. I wanted to block that one off because we've got some plans coming down the road for putting something in kind of the center area of the back of the machine. Going back to here. So that will be blocking off this center section where the exhaust is at right now. So that'll be blocking that one off because I want to be able to utilize this area for something else somewhere down the line. Well, we got pieces of a uh, field hanging out here, but yeah, that's all right. A little bit hanging out. All right, so then this is gonna be the area that gets cut out just slightly from that template. We'll go over that one once we get this rear fascia off. But going over back here, we also, like I said, the, that block off plate for the center section and then the wiring here for the actual switch. This exhaust does have a nice little cutout piece right here. So this is what actually tunes the exhaust to be able to either push the exhaust gases through the muffled, uh, more of the baffled portions of this exhaust or let it flow more straight through this section here to give it more of a throaty, more loud exhaust. So we do have the cutout actuator there and then we've got a switch that is gonna be run into the cab. It's gonna to run to power and ground there. Probably have to take out the uh, passenger side seat to be able to get access to the buzz bar again there. One fuse, got plenty of wiring there. It looks like enough for probably a four seater, but plenty to go there. 
Looks like a pretty nice kit. Plenty of zip ties. Always love seeing zip ties. All right, let's get this thing slapped on in there. Thanks to our nice and trusty SP Tools mid-torque half-inch impact. Makes quick work. You move the seat up a little bit, take out the two 18s that hold in the seat base there. And you have to take out the two 18s that hold in the straps for your harnesses into the back. And then we've got our 3 8 impact down here that took out our two 13s to take out the seat from up here up front. And there sits the seat. Now we're gonna need to remove our rear valence, which is pretty simple here. You've got one, two, three, four, and then there's a fifth one in the middle on mine. I didn't put it back in there because obviously I have my plate and everything there. So we'll get the five torques to get this rear valence off. Now I'm not gonna go into too much uh, depth here on exactly removing the muffler because I went over that in uh, my last video that I did where you're gonna pull out two of the 13s with bolts and nuts there and there on the bottom part of the bracket. And then we've got our four factory springs right there to pull back off and remove from the exhaust. At that point, you also wanna take this heat shield loose and then this rear muffler will pull right on out. All right, now we've got our stock one out. So we've got it sitting here and we've got the new exhaust ready to go in. The biggest difference that I really wanted to point out between the two is the weight difference. I don't have a scale sitting here ready or anything, but I would say that the stock exhaust compared to this one probably weighs a good third more than what the captain's choice weighs, which is crazy. You know, you would think the stainless plus the actuator added on to it, it would weigh more, but actually it, it definitely does not. So we're looking at quite a good uh, weight savings there also. Now, just to also point out, I am keeping the stock factory converter in the unit still. I know a lot of guys, they go to a catless unit just for that pipe, but I am doing this in stages and we're gonna put on just the muffler first and see how that one goes. And then after that, we might add on the catless pipe there later on down the road. So this one goes into the same exact locations, gonna bolt on the same places, use the same springs, same hardware and everything. So we'll get that one slapped up on there and then we'll uh, worry about the wiring. Another pro tip on this one, um, before we tighten up any of our hardware here, go ahead and put them in finger tight and then put in your springs. Get those in first before you tighten these all the way. That way we know everything's gonna seat just nice and perfectly there. Give it a good little shake around and then tighten up your four bolts and nuts hardware here at the lower section. All right, now we're moving on to our rear valence here. And this is where the nice cutout area that they do give in the kit also comes in handy. As you can see, the uh, reflector has a nut that sticks through right here. And then this section sits flat against the plastic right inside this little uh, gusset there. So that's nice. And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna mark it with a Sharpie, go in along there. And then I've got a nice little cutout tool and our Milwaukee straight die grinder. Uh, so we're gonna grind that stuff all off and down, make it look all neat as we possibly can. And then we're gonna put in our block off plate for the center section here. All right, so now we've got our indents all cut out and evened out. I sanded down the edges best I could for it. So they'll, they'll hide pretty decently because they're gonna hug right up against the exhaust. So now we need to install the overlay plate that goes here into the middle section. And then all I did was take the hardware out and then use the holes as a template to mark some spots, one hole there. And then we're gonna drill two of them right into these places right here. So we're gonna drill here with our SP uh, drill here. We've got a quarter inch drill bit to drill those three holes. That one. Pull this down two handed here. There you go, that should do it. And now, when we're all reassembled, there we are. The nice contour lines fit to the exhaust pretty darn nice. 
Now for the last part, doing the wiring. We already took the seat out. Now we're gonna have to run the supplied wire from the actuator here. I'm gonna run it up along here because this is where I've got a lot of my other ones ran. We're gonna run it down here, across to the center, and into the vehicle there because we got all, plenty of that wire to go around. All right, so we've got everything installed here. The fascia is all in, the wiring is ran. I don't have it all loomed up together, but we've got an extra probably three feet here that I will loom up in here. But I've got the captain as an assistant here, the captain to actuate the captain's choice exhaust here for us. So let's go ahead and get the uh, first start for this one. Crank her up, captain. We're kind of running out of daylight here, so I don't know if we're going to get any uh, blasts down the roadway here to get drive-bys. Uh, we might hold off till we get some more sunlight and stuff, but we will get those coming up here. I'm sure it won't be very long for you, though. Yep. As you guys can tell, this thing sounds absolutely amazing. I am going to put it out there and say that this is probably one of my favorite parts that I've installed on this thing. I mean, it really hasn't done a whole lot for performance wise. I mean, it might have freed up a couple of horsepower here or there, but I don't think it's really done anything to affect the zero to 60 times yet. We've got a couple more things coming for that. So that'll be coming up soon anyways. But as far as the sound and the most amount of change for what I've done in one single part, this has made the most bang for the buck, I think. Yes, this exhaust is a little bit on the pricey side. At, I'm pretty sure it's like right around eleven dollars or $1,200 for this exhaust with the, the captain's choice with the switch and everything to be able to switch it back and forth. Which, you know, is pretty pricey when it comes to exhaust. But, dude, this thing is high-end exhaust. It is T304, I believe, uh, stainless, so it's never going to have any kind of rusting or crusting issues like that. So I'm I'm excited and I'm glad that I got this one put on. Later on down the line, I see me putting on the Catalyst pipe as well and doing, uh, you know, of course, a lot more in the way of horsepower. So it'll change throughout the upgrades as we go, but I'm I'm super glad that we got this exhaust. It was, it's been by far my favorite piece that I've installed on this X3, and I see why so many people put this on first before they put anything else on to the ride. So I'm definitely happy about it. Big thumbs up to Evo Power Sports for uh, making an amazing product and uh, coming out with 
so many great things. They really do. If you guys don't know who they are, go ahead and check them out. I'll leave the link to everything down in the description below. You guys go check out Evo. They come out with all kinds of stuff, and we're going to be putting more of their stuff on here in the future as well. Big shout out as well to SB Tools, as always, supplying the amazing tools that we use to be able to put this thing in this time. We use our half inch electric impact to be able to get the seat out, as well as the 3 8 one to be able to get the bolts of the exhaust out as well. Uh, we didn't really have to use a whole lot else in the way of tools on this round, but those few definitely did help us. So big shout out to SP Tools. Thank you on that one. I'll put the links to those few things down in the description below as well if you guys were interested in checking those out. Uh, don't forget, you guys can get 10% off anything on their site with just using the code RUSTBELT at checkout. Well, boys and girls, that's about all we've got for today. I appreciate everybody tuning in today. We've got lots more really cool stuff coming up. This weekend, I am actually going to be taking the side-by-side -side over to uh, the buddies over at Ironclad Tint in Inglewood, Ohio. If you guys saw the video before where we did the tinted headlights on my buddy's Ram, the same guys are going to be putting the wrap on this unit as well. We're getting it all wrapped up in SB Tools and some really great graphics. It's going to be pretty darn sick. I'll bring you guys some uh, little tidbits here and there, probably send you guys some little bits over on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure you go over there and check me out as well. If you need to send me a message or anything, getting a hold of me on Instagram is pretty easy as well. If you guys have any other questions, you can also email me anytime at therustbeltmechanic at gmail.com. I appreciate everybody tuning in today. And as always, you guys stay awesome.